Hi everyone. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. It's very exciting, like, because it's not often that we get to do a philosophy reaction video. So I'm going to do a reaction, I guess, or review it. I guess, I've already seen this trailer, so it's not like a naive reaction to it. Um, but to the trailer for the forthcoming movie um, called Seneca, or it, it was originally listed as being called Seneca on the creation of earthquakes, although in this trailer it just seems to be called Seneca. And this movie features John Malkovich as the star. It's uh, made by a German uh, company, um, although it's in English. Uh, I guess this is for a German film festival because there's German subtitles on it. And uh, the trailer's just come out a few days ago. Uh, the movie apparently releases in about a week's time, at the end of the month, from what I understand. We've been waiting for for a while. It's not many new, not a lot of news came out about it except a few stills. It's uh, I heard that it was a black comedy, which kind of seems consistent with the trailer. And uh, I should mention it features Julian Sands, who has been in the news recently because he was hiking and he's gone missing, um, and hasn't been found yet. So um, unfortunately. Uh, I just thought I'd mention that because it's kind of in the news at the moment. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's have a look at this trailer. I'm just, it's kind of weird because it sounds like he says... President Nero has decided that you are to be executed. Um, but I think other people have commented on this and said the thing that they found odd, obviously, it's quite striking, is that he refers to Nero as president rather than emperor. You know, I I like the look of the movie. Um, the costumes look pretty cool. The scenery, I'm not sure where it was filmed. Someone said it was in North Africa. It doesn't look like it's in Italy. Um, certainly doesn't look like Rome. So, um, but this thing about calling Nero president, I don't, it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, there's a kind of bit of a story there because the Roman emperor, the office of Roman emperor arguably isn't really like what we think of as an emperor today. The Roman emperor wasn't really a monarch. Um, I would say an emperor is a monarch that rules over several nations, but uh, the Roman emperor's office is a bit more complex than that. But I don't think the word president really conveys it. So kind of jarring. And it's at the beginning of the trailer as well, which has kind of put some people off. Um, but I would say I think John Malkovich is like ideal casting as Seneca. I, he's pretty much how I imagine Seneca was. Um, bit of trivia, there's this bust um, that we call Pseudo Seneca now that you still see everywhere of this kind of angst ridden, kind of straggly haired character. It's believed to be a Greek poet now, not the real Seneca. Because a few decades later, a, a bust was found, a double herm, and one of the heads was Socrates, if I remember rightly, and the other head was had. Seneca's name engraved on it and he he was bald and he's a bit looks a bit chubbier than uh, John Malkovich but kind of looks like John Malkovich and, and Seneca was a kind of chief of staff in a sense to Nero he was a mover and shaker he was a speech writer he wasn't just rich he was like Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos rich so one of the richest men allegedly in, in uh, Roman history um so I imagine John Malkovich kind of being what Seneca was like in a sense. And let's see what else happens. Let you take your own life. It's generous of him. He's going to let you take your own life. That's pretty normal in uh, Roman society. Um, I always think the the obvious motives for a lot of the weird things that are done in history. Like there's an obvious reason why you would want people to you would execute people by forced suicide. And it because it, it, it implies a kind of compliance on their part, so it allows the person ordering the execution to kind of avoid 
some to dampen down the blame or responsibility that they might feel to some extent because Seneca took his own life although you know there were guards standing around him when he did it this is a very respected man this is Nero now to be fair this doesn't really look anything like uh, the Nero that we know from statues I wonder if there is something in the Roman histories that suggests that Nero um, put on weight towards the end of his life because he's usually slimmer looking than this actor um, and he, I think he, he normally, doesn't he normally have kind of uh, a bit of a neck beard or something but he, yeah this and this doesn't really look like Roman hair to me so this guy really reminds me of the actor that plays Herod in the movie Jesus Christ Superstar and there's another reason for that actually which you'll see in a moment which has caused some controversy this is a nice shot, actually. Um, very colourful. I like this shot, actually. Uh, I am I who that character is. She looks like she's dying. I'm kind of tempted to wonder if it was Agrippina, Nero's mother, but she kind of doesn't look old enough. Now he believes that mercy beats. This is pretty wild. Seneca wrote uh, an essay called On Mercy that was addressed to Nero. You will not speak of these bad ideas, had I... Yeah, so this is another thing that people found jarring, which is that Nero is depicted here wearing sunglasses. Um, now, there is a passage in Pliny the Elder, which some scholars uh, or some commentators have interpreted as meaning that Nero had some kind of opaque lens for watching gladiatorial games, like a, pr a primitive is it like set of sunglasses or a t maybe just a tinted lens. Although it's so vague that it could be that he's referring to looking at a reflection in a mirror. But he talks about a polished emerald, so it would be opaque and uh, looking at a gladiatorial game through it. So, But I don't think it would look like this. But on the, on the one hand, it almost certainly wouldn't have looked like this. On the other hand, it is kind of based on a historical source. It's not completely made up. But again, the fact he's wearing sunglasses makes him look even more like Herod in Jesus Christ Superstar, who also wears sunglasses. Let the president's employed as scholar in residence, Nero would have been a worse princess. He was me for any part of himself that resembles a man. So we're definitely digging in here to Seneca's rationalization for his collaboration with Nero. So even some people have kind of sneered about this trailer. Um, I think they're going to like it more than they realise, perhaps, um, because John Malkovich is going to have to address the moral dilemma that Seneca finds himself in, um, collaborating with a tyrant, basically, and the argument people say, based on On Clemency, is Seneca thought it was better to be on the inside, trying to moderate Nero's excesses than being on the outside, like the Stoic opposition, Thrasea, um, and his associates trying to openly oppose Nero. Um, but Seneca didn't really succeed. Um, so, Or who knows, what would Nero have been like if Seneca wasn't there? But he sounds like he's touching on this question of, you know, what the hell am I doing here? And, um, you know, is he humanising Nero? That seems to be his, his... He seems to be kind of justifying... His, uh, his role to himself and maybe to others. Aim for virtue, happiness will... F Aim for virtue and happiness will follow. And he depicts firing an arrow, which is a, a, a metaphor that's familiar to many people from Cicero, although used in a slightly different sense. But nevertheless, you get the feeling here that he's touching on concepts as best he can in a movie of this nature. Um, I'm going to hazard the guess there's going to be more philosophy in this movie than there was in Gladiator. There are probably two or three direct or indirect allusions to the meditations of Marcus Aurelius in Gladiator, so a bit more than people often realise. Um, I think there's going to be more philosophy in this than there was in Gladiator, and actually more philosophy in this perhaps than in any other comparable movie. So, you know, not to be sniffed at despite the use of the word president and the the presence of sunglasses. Follow. Be quiet! 
I don't know if does is there any evidence that Nero was ever that abrasive towards Seneca? Um but Nero was a piece of work according to the uh, Roman histories. I know recently people have tried to salvage his character. I'm not entirely I'm not I'm not convinced by that at all, to be honest. But um yeah, I don't know. Like I can imagine he may have spoken to Seneca like that. It's possible. Does anyone ever demand that you just be quiet for once? Yeah, just shut up, Seneca. He keeps saying that as well. He says it at least three times. I guess this might be Seneca's wife. We know virtually nothing about her. He just mentions her in passing. Stop! Stop! Why is everyone hitting me today? Right, slapstick, right? There's, there's, at least in the trailer, the way it's edited, there's an element of slapstick to this. And, the, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Seneca's life would either be really dark or it would be a kind of tragic comedy. And so, you know, I think some people have been surprised that this is a black comedy. It doesn't surprise me at all. Like, I can't really conceive of many other ways of telling this story. Oh, you have spoken. Enough. They laugh at you. Stoic preacher of the simple life who got filthy rich being Nero's ghostwriter. The stoic preacher of the simple life who got filthy rich being Nero's ghostwriter. Wow, right, right on the nose there. Um, so yeah, sure. I, I'm not even going to comment on that. But that that is, and when we talk about Seneca being rich, I think it's according to Cassius Dio. He he, like incredibly rich i mean presumably the second richest person in the roman empire beside nero himself there's i'll just mention in passing seneca put himself in a situation where because he owed so much money to nero and his family members got positions under nero you know it's the same old story about mobsters and so on he's uh, he's indebted to nero nero has leverage over Seneca. And Epictetus, I think if you're unsure what to make of Seneca, a good thought experiment is just to imagine Epictetus reading on clemency, or imagine Epictetus watching this movie and how he would respond. Epictetus repeatedly warns his students not to flatter tyrants, which is exactly what Seneca does, um, and gets indebted to a tyrant and gets his family indebted to a tyrant. So yeah he's in a, a very he's put himself in a very morally compromised situation to say the least yeah! a bargain that many good men have made when agreeing to aid bad regimes but you know i did it for rome he says it's a bargain not many good men have made when offering to aid bad regimes but he did it for rome which again is seneca rationalizing to himself to other people his collusion in Nero's regime, um, which is, yeah, going to be a major theme of this movie, like, doubtless. I don't know what's going on in this scene. It seems difficult to relate to, it, unless it's got something to do with the festivals that, that Nero used to sing at and play the lyre. Um... That looked like it was Seneca with a beard, so it may be like a flashback to his exile. Um, I would say, as an aside, Seneca's period in exile is probably, and thereby hangs a tale, nowhere near as bad as he implies that it was. I mean, it was just off the coast of Italy for a start. Um, and it's possible that he had slaves with him. Um, so I don't think he was like, it was like uh, that movie Castaway with uh, Tom Hanks. You know, he's like grew up long fingernails and a big beard, like living like a wild man on a barren island. Like uh, I imagine it was, he was living in luxury uh, during his exile, contrary to what he says about it. I wonder if what we're seeing in that scene is Seneca leaving Nero's service. So he makes a, it, it, yeah, that's total speculation, 
but he he makes a, a bit of a scene there about bidding farewell to the people around him. So he may be bailing on Nero at this point and retiring from public life. Perhaps I can become my best Seneca by playing Socrates. I mean, if you're into philosophy, not only do you get Seneca, but he makes a mention of Socrates there, which is pretty cool. Maybe I can become my best Seneca by playing Socrates. Modelling a sage is integral to Stoicism. Um, there might even be a passage in Seneca that they have in mind there. But, you know, there's there are, even in this trailer, more than enough references to philosophy to make it clear that there's going to be quite a bit, there's going to be more philosophy in this than there would be in any similar Swords and Sandals movie, I think. So I'm quite hopeful for it. And the use of the word president and the sunglasses and the, the landscape and so on don't really bother me too much. I think John Malkovich is a, an amazing actor. He's clearly not just phoning it in. He looks like he's giving an excellent performance. And I think the script is interesting, apart from maybe these few quirks. There's also actually a bit in other Hollywood trivia. Um, Gladiator 2 is in the works at the moment. And I'm very interested in that because recently we published a graphic novel, actually I've got it here, called Verissimus, um, which is almost like a prequel to Gladiator in a way. And when you write a graphic novel, it's kind of like, you know, it's a bit like writing a, a screenplay for a movie, you know, if anyone's interested. Well, we've, we've already been talking about the possibility of making it into an animation or a movie or something. And... Uh, but the screenwriter who's working on Gladiator 2 for Ridley Scott, I heard from a little bird, has actually read uh, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor, my other book. Um, so the reason that interests me is I'm kind of hopeful that there might be a bit more stoicism in Gladiator 2. So you might say, how can there be a sequel because Russell Crowe's dead in it? But it's about the child that in the movie is called Lucius. Um, who's Marcus Aurelius' grandson in the movie. And so I guess he's grown up in it. But I suspect there might be flashbacks or at least references to Marcus Aurelius and uh, Russell Crowe's character. Do you know, the strange thing is, I really think that Russell Crowe, as he looks now, would make a, a good Marcus Aurelius himself. Maybe that would be too weird for him to play it because he's played across from Richard Harris being... Marcus Aurelius and Gladiator, but I'd like to see Russell Crowe uh, play Marcus Aurelius. I think that would be pretty cool. An older Marcus Aurelius. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm hopeful there might be a bit more philosophy. I understand uh, Russell Crowe was a big fan, is a big fan of the meditations, and he was really pushing to have more stoicism in the first Gladiator movie. And I think Ridley Scott was kind of interested in that, but it didn't end up panning out that way. It became more of a, a conventional sort of sword and sandals movie. But if, if this Seneca movie succeeds, and I'm kind of hopeful for it, it feels like a, it's a bit of an indie movie, a bit of an art house movie. But I think it, I actually think people are going to like it more than they think from the trailer. Maybe this is just me being optimistic. But if I look closely at this trailer, it suggests to me that if we look past some of the phrases and some of the, the costume issues, um, you know, they're going to be talking about philosophy. They're going to be talking about ethics. And, you know, that's the most important thing. It doesn't matter whether he's wearing sunglasses. It doesn't matter whether he refers to the emperor as a president. What matters is, are, is John Malkovich really actually going to portray Seneca as a morally conflicted individual trying to reason through the dilemmas that he's facing using at least some fragments of Stoic philosophy? If he does, that would be awesome. And it would maybe inspire people to uh, incorporate more allusions to philosophy in other movies. So, what do you think? Please comment below and let me know. And I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.